Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my quarter-final preview and predictions video. Um, as you can see we're down at the final eight. We've got Ungern's Humans versus Silsay's Undead, RTSD's Necromantic versus Guinness's Lizardmen, Darun's Orcs versus Winteross's Woodies, and a human mirror between Andri and Ornan. Um, now unfortunately not everybody's picked their skill yet because I have to do this prediction video before the first game. Um, Andre and Ornan are scheduled for today, so I'll have to just look at the team and uh, predict what they'll pick for their skill. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it. So first up it's Ungern versus Silse. Ungern has a 69% win rate in Champs Ladder and he's French and he qualified from CCL Season 14 on PC. Um, this round you give a double skill before the match, so I'm not sure what he's going to take, of course, but in my opinion, he will take guard on a catcher. He's already picked guard on one catcher, so that will give him six guard total, um, which is pretty good, isn't it? Nearly nearly the maximum amount of guard he could possibly have for this human team, because he's got the mighty blow tackler, which is, which is handy to hit ghouls with and maybe get some attrition. So yeah, he's nearly got max guard, which uh, I always like to see. So yeah, that looks a looks a very nice team. They, I didn't like the thirteen players at first, but then I didn't think of the lead run, the ogre, which makes up for the fact that he's only got two rerolls. So yeah, quite quite a nice team really. Now he is up against another Frenchman in Silse, who qualified from Franco Ball. Only has a fifty four percent win rate in Champs Ladder, but hasn't played very much at all. He's at fifty eight percent with Undead, but again, it's such a small sample size, about thirty games that can't read too much into that um, and yeah he, I think here he's gonna pass on the double I know I would and um, I think he needs guard he's only got two guard versus six uh, pr probably six um, so I'm I'm pretty sure he's gonna have to take guard on that mummy uh, he might take block on the other mummy uh, he could take guard on a ghoul I guess and then take guard um, in the semi-finals if he gets there so yeah he could he could go guard on one of these ghouls but um, I think he probably wants it on the on the mummy. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough choice for him. Block, block's gonna be good. Guard on the mummy's good. Guard on the ghoul's good. Um, yeah, but I think his team looks a bit lacking now, despite the fact that you know allegedly undead and and the the rest would catch up to humans. Humans with six guard is pretty strong. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go with Ungern to win this one just because. Yeah, six guard is, is still good. I, I know two mummies is good and the ghouls are good and everything. You know, Undead are still a good team. He's he's obviously got four ghouls and 12 players, so he's actually outnumbered. Um, yeah, I'm, I do I do think Ungern will win this one. So, well, I think Ungern is favoured. I don't think he will win. You know, everyone's a good coach at this stage and anything can happen in, in any game of Blood Bowl anyway. You know, it's more likely that whoever gets the best dice in each of these games is going to win because everyone's pretty close and the teams are pretty close. But I'll give the edge to one gun. And the second quarter final is RTSD versus Guinness. RTSD flying the flag for Britain. It's coming home. Um, he qualified from UK BBL. Um, he has, does not play in Champs Ladder at all. Hasn't played a single game in Champs Ladder. And, you know, this is one of the good things about the community qualifiers, isn't it? Because here's somebody who most people you know, who watch the stream, etc. won't have heard of him because he doesn't play in Champs Ladder. Obviously, you know, I, I know him from OFL and people in UK BBL know him and maybe other leagues. I don't know. So he's a bit of an unknown quantity. Um, he's gone for the fun choice of Pom and the Wolf and he's taken guard on his white there. I don't know what he's going to take for this one. I would think guard on a flesh golem because he's up against Guinness with lizard men. I think he needs as much strength as possible. He, he, ha he can't have a mighty blow tackler. Um, or, you know, I think maybe his two block mighty blows would have been better. You know, to, to, to maybe he's hit skinks, maybe he's Kaz Saurus. Now he's all in on trying to get two dice on Saurus and kill them. Um, I think he needs guard. So I can definitely see him passing up the double. I guess he could take double on a ghoul, but it seems a bit lame. So I think probably a guard fleshy is what he'll go with. Three rerolls, twelve players. It's it's gonna be it's this this game is gonna be very interesting. Um, it's gonna basically be decided by whether his 
James T. Kirk fires with his claw palm or not. And yeah, this is uh, this is Guinness's team, and I really don't know what he's going to pick. He's got the block guard Crocs. Maybe it's just another block. You know, he doesn't want to waste a double, but he knows he's not going to have to fight Wood Elves until the final if he gets there. So block on a skink or shoe hands on a skink isn't isn't so appealing. Um, so yeah, I think he's probably just going to go block on a Saurus here. He could stack. He could go for a guard player, but RTSD doesn't have a lot of strength. I don't think he needs the guard. I think maybe he'll just go block. Also, I should say, um, I should have said before this, Guinness is the reigning defending World Blood Bowl 2 World Cup champion. He won it in 2016. Um, he qualified from NATTS, and he is Canadian. He's got a 68% win rate with Lizard Men in Champs Ladder, and 68 overall because Lizards are pretty much the only team he plays. Um, so, yeah, you know, he's, had, he's got a lot of experience. basically a one-race coach. Which is interesting, isn't it? Um, that's probably unique amongst the people here. Uh, most people play with a variety of races, whereas he only plays lizard men. And yeah, I think that's you know I, li I like eleven men with the apple, but it's it's a little bit risky, isn't it? You know, it's 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 going to be huge. RTSD's wolves, if they can remove Saurus, it's going to be hard times for for Guinness. If they don't, it's going to be hard times. For RTSD, so this is almost just a, a crapshoot, really. I mean, Lizard Men are such a stronger team than Necro if if all players are on the pitch. But that's the thing, isn't it? It's the wild card of the POM. Um, but I think on the balance of probabilities, it favours the Lizard Men. Um, so I'll back Guinness. So the third quarter final is Darun versus Wenteros. These have picked their skills. So um, Darun has gone with a guard, a, a fourth guard, second guard blitzer makes makes a lot of sense. I think there wouldn't have been much value of like dodge on the thrower. I guess he could have just got another guard, but why? <laughs> there's no real need to. He's got enough picks for guard if he wins. So yeah, he's gone for the extra guard. Makes a lot of sense. Darun has a 59% win rate in champ slider, 64 with orcs. Um, he qualified from ICBBL and he's Canadian. So there's a bit of background in him. I thought he played fine in, in the uh, round of 16 versus Wolf Bainsons. And uh, so he's had a bit of an experience of the matchup already in this tournament. So I think he's, he's got a decent chance, especially with a mighty blow tackler. And this is Wenteros. He qualified from the Russian Blood Bowl League. So I assume he's Russian, but it's unconfirmed. He has a 74% win rate in Champs Ladder. But he's only played 90 games and he hasn't played any games with Wood Elves in Champs Ladder. So... You know, I don't know how big a deal he is in the Russian Blood Bowl League. Um, you know, obviously everyone at this point has has played well and deserved their spot. Um, he's got a couple of guard. You know, he's gone guard on the catcher. I, I do like that. He didn't really have the choice to go mighty blow by on the dancer by taking frenzy. Um, he's got the apple, which probably better than the reroll against to runs mighty blow tackler. But the fact that he's got three skills. On a no block on the catchers means that I think the mighty blow tackler could do some damage, couldn't it? It's really gonna. This is. I think this one's really hard to call. Woodies are incredibly powerful, but you know, and they're always gonna have a chance. It's a really tough one to call. I'm gonna back Wenteros just because you know Woodies are amazing, but it's easily easily winnable for Duran. Could go either way. Absolutely, they they all could. But this one especially so, I think. Very hard to call. And the fourth quarterfinal is Andri versus Ornan, a human mirror. Um, Andri is Spanish. He won Blood Bowl 1 World Cup in 2010, I've been told. Uh, he qualified from Pietro Di Minotauro League. Um, he's got a 68% win rate in Champs Ladder. And he's taken guard on the block catcher, as I as I thought he would. It's, it's horrible to take the block set up on the catcher. But then the payoff once you've got a block guard is amazing, isn't it? I, I regret taking block on my catcher now because it did leave me a bit weak for that game. But then it really comes good when you've got block and dodge, block, dodge and guard on the same player. So he's got five guard there. Mighty blow, tackler, block, ogre. Twelve players, three reroll apo. It's, it's a very nice team, isn't it? Um, yeah, very strong. And Ornan... Is American. He qualified through the Rebel League. I read it. Read it. Blood Bowl League. 
He's got a 65% win rate overall in Champs Ladder. And uh, he's he's passed on the double. He could have had a guard catcher, but he's gone for the, the guard auger. So much like his, his round of 16 game, he's gone for the what what he feels gives him the best chance of winning this game. Uh, you know, I think long term, obviously, you'd want more guard. Um, you know, let, let's imagine he wins this game. He'd much rather have guard on the catcher and give guard to the ogre than have like a block or whatever and then a block in the last game. And, you know, so I think he's definitely, I think he's definitely picking for this round, which is good. But he does have two tacklers, neither of which have mighty blow. He's only got four guard. I, I say only, but he's, he's only got four guard. Um, he does have, the, the guard on the ogre is pretty good though. Um, he only has two re-rolls, which is, which is something to think about. 13 players. And he's got the pom, so, you know, the pom could just go and wreck wreck Andre's team I would say Andre I hadn't heard of Andre at all um, to be honest before this he's only played about 160 games in Champs Ladder I say only it sounds a lot doesn't it maybe as if you're if you're a casual player but compared to like you know some of the people who play a lot that's not many um, games but yeah he's impressed me a lot Andre and just because I think his team is better built um, you know in, in terms of this specific matchup, you know, Onan did what he had to do to win the game against the Amazons, which was take and tackle, which you've got to salute that. Um, but I think Andrew's got a better rounded team, and I think he has played well. But again, if this pom goes on a tear, he could, you know, Onan could easily win. And Onan could also outplay him as well, you know, no disrespect to Onan there. Um, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back Andrew to win this one. So there you go, that's all the games. Um, should should all be very good games, all very close. You know, a lot of predicted winners. They could every game could go either way. I'll be casting them all live on Twitch and be doing the replays for YouTube. So keep your eyes peeled for them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.